Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question 739, daily temperatures. Cool. So we're going to be given an area of integers called temperatures and they represent the daily temperatures. Okay. So what we need to do is we return an array called answer, where answer i is the number of days you have to wait after the i-th day to get a warmer temperature. So what does that mean? So very simply, um, let's say at day zero, I have a temperature of 73. Essentially, the question is asking us, how many more days do I have to wait after day zero for getting a temperature greater than 73? So in this case, I have to wait one day, right, as it says here. Uh, and that is 74, right? So the next day has a temperature temperature of 74, which obviously is greater than 73. Cool. So let's look at another example. So let's say I'm at 75. So that's day number zero, one, two. So day number two. And over here, I need to see how many more days until I have a temperature greater than 75. So that's one day. That's two days. That's three days. And finally, that's four days, right? So 76 is the only day that is greater than 75. So it takes us four days to have a temperature above 75, okay? So let's end uh, one last condition. So if there is no future day for which this is possible, keep the answer, answer zero, okay? So let's actually see how, so in this case, let's look at 76, sorry. So 76, um, there's no day after that day with a temperature greater than 76. Same for 73, right, since it's the last day. So both of those just have a zero. Cool. Okay, so what I want to do, or what I usually do with these type of questions before I can solve them, is I kind of look at some basic conditions that we have, right? So what is one very simple condition, okay? So let's say I have it in ascending order. Cool. So one, two, three, that's some example. So what is the result going to look like? Well, at day zero, it takes us one day to get a higher temperature than one. Over the same over here and same over here, right? So if it's in ascending order, the answer is just going to be all ones, right? We just need to wait one day. So this is going to be one simple solution, right? What we could do is we iterate through each of the values and then we just iterate through all the remaining values to see until we get a number greater than the value itself. So we're at one. We look at all the numbers after that index and see if whatever the first number is, which is greater than one. Now in this case, it is always going to be the first number, right? So in that case, that is the time complexity of this brute force solution is just going to be big O of n. Now obviously it is a brute force solution. It is not always gonna work. So let's look at the opposite condition where we have descending numbers, so three, two, and one. And what is the result going to look like for this? So it's actually just going to be all zeros. And the reason for that is because there is no day that's going to come after a, a certain day with a higher temperature. So I'm at the day, I'm at day zero with temperature three. And since it is in descending order, there's going to be no day after it, which has a temperature that is greater than three, right? So it's just going to be all zeros. So in this case, our brute force solution is going to be n squared because we have to check all the numbers, all the n numbers after the number itself. So this is going to be a time complexity of big O of n squared. So this is why the brute force solution is bad, okay? So now let's actually look at another condition. Um, and let's look at this, okay? So I'm not going to give you the final answer, but I'll kind of uh, build up to it, okay? So let's say I have 3, 2, 1, and I have the number 10, okay? So obviously in this case, just by looking at it, the answer is just going to be, the number of days I am away from 10 because everything until here is in descending order, right? So that's the basic idea. So let's look at our setup for this. So I'm going to have result array and this is going to be all, um, or let's just leave it all blank for now, okay? So that is how it's going to look for now. And now I'm actually going to keep track of one more kind of array, okay? Now I'm not going to tell you what data structure it is. We'll kind of build up onto it. But for now, let's just say it's some sort of array, okay? And I'll just call it to check, okay? So what is this going to con uh, contain? So this is going to contain all the numbers that I want to check, right? So essentially, so first I have the number three. And now do I know the answer for three? So do I know what the next answer at the index zero is going to be? Well, I don't. So since I don't, I'm going to keep track of it in to check, okay? So I'm going to have the number three 
and I'm going to have its index, which is going to be the index zero. Now, why do I need to keep track of the index? So very simply, um, the reason I'm keeping track of the index is because that way I can find the distance, right? So let's say I'm comparing index zero to the index 10, and the distance is just gonna be 10 minus zero, which is 10. So what that means is it takes 10 days to get a hotter temperature. So that's why I'm keeping track of the index. Cool, so I have the value and I have the index. So now let's move on to the next number two. So before just adding the number two to our list over here, what I'm essentially going to do is I'm gonna check if the number two is greater than any of the values in our list, okay? And if it is, well, that means we found uh, an answer, right? So over here, I compare two to the number three. Well, it's not greater. So in that case, I'm just gonna add it. So that means I don't have an answer yet. So two and its index is one, okay? So let's move on. So now I'm at the number one, okay? So is one greater than three? It's not. Is one greater than two? Again, it's not, right? So one at the index two. Cool. But now things kind of change. So I have the number 10. Okay. So now I have this number 10. So is 10 greater than three? It is. So now that means I have a answer, right? So I finally found a number that is greater than the number three. And I need to find how, how many days it took to get there. So 10 is at the index three and three is at the index zero. So what I do for finding the number of days is I just find the difference between the indices. So, so three minus zero is the number three. Now, where do I put this result? So I put the result at the index zero, okay? That's it. So this has a value of three. So now I'm done with this. So I, I don't need to check it anymore. So I'm gonna pop it out, I'm gonna remove it, okay? So now, same thing, 10 is greater than two as well, okay? So what, I, what I'm gonna do, what am I gonna do over here? So same thing, find the di uh, distance. So the distance here is two, so I remove this as well. And finally, over here, again, 10 is greater than one, find the distance, the distance is one, and that's it. So now, this is going to be a full iteration. But we have one small thing missing, we did not put a value for this. So well, one simple thing we can do is the last value is just always going to be zero. But now, this is not the best solution, so just quick detour. What we do, you know, actually, is we can just set all the results to have a value of zero in the beginning. And if they have to be changed, they're going to be changed. That's it, like how we change them right now, okay? So just look at the condition three, two, one, okay? So now in my two checklist, I'm first gonna have the number three, then I'm gonna have the number two, and then I'm gonna have the number one, and I'm done. I don't actually make any changes because there's no number that comes after that is greater. So in this case, the result stays untouched, all zeros, okay? So that is one kind of thing, right? So all the results are going to be uh, with a value zero. So now we actually come up with a small thing, which is how exactly do we come up, so this two check array, how do we add and remove values, right? So what we did is we had, so I'm not writing the index just for you know making it simple. So I had the numbers three, two, and one, right? And then what I did is I removed the numbers from left to right. So this is one very important thing to notice, that all the numbers are going to be in decreasing order, no matter what. Now, why is that? So I just want you to think about a scenario, right? So let's say I have the number three, then I have the number two, and then I have the number one. Now, if I get the number 100, that means that so far that all the numbers before it, right, which are less than it, have already now have the number 100, which is greater than it. So they're going to have some sort of answer, right? So three is going to have some answer. This is going to have some answer, and so is this. So now, let's just say we have more temperature. So let's say now I have the temperature 100. Now let's say I have the temperature 101. Now if I have this temperature, that means that for the day where I have the temperature 100, I already have an answer. So this is also not going to exist. Okay, so this kind of continues. So now let's say I have 102, then I have 103, right? So in this case as well, if I have 102, that means 101 has an answer, right? If I have 103, 102 has an answer, okay? So no matter what, this two check array is always going to be in descending order. But, so this is where it kind of becomes important. So is this a stack or is this a cube, right? So what we did is we popped out at the zero index. 
So this is where it gets kind of important. And I think I could best show you that using an example. Okay. So let's say very similar to the previous one, but I have something like this. Uh, let's say 101, uh, 3, 4, sorry, no, no, no. let's do 101, uh, and then I have 5, and then I have 3, and then I have 10, and then I have uh, 9, and then 200, okay? So here's where it gets slightly interesting, okay? So I'll just quickly do the setup, so result. So how many zeros am I going to have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is how I initialize it. And now I'm gonna have my two check array, okay? So this is where it gets important. So now I have a number 101, okay? 101 at the index zero, cool. So now I go to the number five. Well, five is obviously not greater than 101, so I'm gonna add it. Five at the index one. So now I have the number three, so three, at the index two. Again, three is not greater than any of them. Now I have the number 10. So this is where it gets interesting. So if I get the number 10, so 10 is going to be less than this number over here, okay? So let's say if I was comparing them, I'd have to compare through all the values over here, okay? So I have to compare 10 with one not one, right? And obviously 10 is smaller, so this stays as it is. But 10 is greater than five, and it is greater than three. So the values over here do get updated. So essentially what I'm trying to say is we're going to go from right to left. We're gonna move in this direction. And essentially, why is that important? So first I compare 10 to the number three, okay? So now in this case, so zero, one, two, three. So 10 is at the index three and 10 is greater than three. So this has an answer. Okay, so let's update it quickly. So at the index two, we're going to have a answer of one. And now this is gonna get removed. We're gonna pop it out. So now we have the number five, okay? So at the number five, what do we have? So uh, 10 is greater than five, correct? So what is the distance? Three minus one, two. So we update our result. This becomes two. Now we pop this out. So now we have the number 101. So 10 is less than 101. So now we can actually stop the entire iteration. So let's just, just for the sake of it, let's say we had numbers greater than 101 prior to it. So let's say over here we had 999 and before that we had 1000. All those numbers would be to the left of it and it would not matter. We don't even need to check it, right? Like I showed you earlier, this is in decreasing order. So it does not matter. So essentially we're going to move from right to left and this is going to make our to check list a stack. And more specifically, we call this a monotonic stack. And why is it monotonic? Well, monotonic means it is in one direction. It is either all decreasing or all increasing. In this case, it is a monotonic decreasing stack because the values decrease, okay? And kind of like I showed earlier, right? Because if in between you have any number that goes up, right, if it increases, and in that case, all the numbers that were greater than it, or sorry, less than it, are going to go away. That's it, okay? So now let's continue this, for example, right? So I, uh, I updated two values. Now I'm at the number nine. So I append the number nine because nine is not greater than 101. So nine at index four. Now I'm at the number 200, okay? So this is at index five, and I do the same thing. So 200 is greater than nine, so I continue. So over here, what do I end up with? So 200 is greater than nine. So what's the distance? The distance is one, five minus four, one, zero, one, two, three, four. So over here, we update the value one. And now we remove this. So now at 101, so 101 is less than 200. So this gets updated as well. So this becomes five, that's it, okay? So this is essentially how it's going to work, right? So just for the sake of it, let's say over here, I had the number 300. So let's add the extra value to the result. And over here, 300 comma zero would be what we have, right? And over here, the 300 is gonna stay as it is. It's going to be untouched, right? And after this, we append 200 comma five. And both of these are not going to end up being changing. They're gonna stay as it is, okay? Well, this is gonna become six now, but yeah. So that's basically the idea, right? So it's always going to be in decreasing order. That is why it's called a monotonic decreasing stack. 
So yeah, you can you kind of use this idea for different questions as well. So anyways, let's just look at what the code of this looks like. Um, let me just reset it. Okay, so let's see. So essentially what we're going to do over here is I'll just show you step by step. So the first thing is we've got to make our results array. Okay, so in our results array, like I said, it's just going to be all zeros to start off with. So what is the length of it? It's going to be the same length as temperatures over here. Okay, so now we need to also have our two check um, values. Essentially, this is like I said. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through this. So for index, comma, temperature, in, so I'm just going to enumerate. If you don't know what enumerate does, essentially it gives you the index and the corresponding value. Okay, so what do I do? So first I need to check all the values one by one and I need to pop them out and update the values if this current temperature is greater than whatever is inside of two check. Okay, and now remember, I'm gonna pop out the values from right to left, okay? So let's do that. So let's first, um, we're gonna have a condition. So first we're gonna check if two check is not empty. And if that's the case, we're gonna to go to two check. We're gonna get its topmost value or like I said, the rightmost value, if that helps, and we're gonna get the zeroth index of that. Now, the reason for that is because we're storing the temperature comma index, okay? So we get the temperature, and we're gonna make sure that the current temp, this one, is greater than whatever temperature is at two check. Now, if that is the case, we pop that value out, okay? So two check dot pop, okay? Pop it out, you're gonna get its, uh, or let's just call this, so let's call this stack, um, temperature and this is going to be the stack uh, index okay so we have these values now and we're going to update it in our result so in the result we go to the stack index and we give it the distance essentially and the distance is going to be from the current index to whatever the stack index is that's it so we've updated our result that way okay and now one more thing we have to do is we need to add the current element to our stack. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna give the temperature comma, and after this, we're just gonna return our result, and that should be it. So if you submit this, our solution should get accepted. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and do let me know if you have any questions.